hi, I'm Stephen Maxwell Johnson, um, director, producer of the film High Ground. Uh, High Ground's a, a, a film set in 1919 in North Australia that kind of looks at uh, uh, the missed opportunity and a take on our history through the perspective of um, Binning and Yungle people, Aboriginal people from Arnhem Land. Um, it's a story that looks at that idea of the missed opportunity, a story that is about a young man um, looking, refining his identity and his roots. It's a, it's a manhunt, it's a story of redemption, it's a story of freedom, hope and love. It's set in an, an exotic and primal landscape uh, that is Arnhem Land. Um, and it's very much a film that tries to create an immersive and interactive experience with uh, the world, uh, the indigenous culture and the human beings that are living and grappling with uh, their positioning and disposition in the world. It's been a bit of a, a, a same life rule for me growing up with Indigenous people, grew up in the Bahamas, Africa, and then I came out to Australia and then into the Northern Territory, into Arnhem Land. I have some very, very long-standing friendships with uh, Binning and Yungu people right across Arnhem Land. Uh, my father was a teacher there. I did the Yothi Indi stuff, including Treaty and, and Jabanar and everything Yothi Indi did in that way. And um, through those those friendships and particularly through my friendship with Dr. Mandawar Yunapingu, that idea of both ways and sharing ideas and bridging uh, the understanding between two cultures was very much part of who I was and how I was with my friends. I never saw the world in black and white. And the stories and uh, history that I grew up with about this country certainly didn't match what I was being not told at school so there was always a big part of me wanting to uh, understand that truth and to um, uh, celebrate it and to put it out there for everyone to actually see and to uh, touch and to understand and connect with ultimately I suppose. I've, I've never really sort of had a conscious uh, idea of, it, of setting it apart it was more about uh, the the time and the immersive experience that I went through to navigate the telling of the story, um, you know, it was never about wanting to to be apologetic about anything. It was more about uh, truth telling exercise. I mean, working with elders and and countrymen right across, listening, learning about stories, and then working very closely with Chris, my my dear friend and writer to sort of um, navigate the idea of a story. Um, we were all grappling, Binning, Yungu, Balanda, all grappling with how we could best tell a story to uh, probably most importantly entertain, um, mm. as well as obviously um, take people into a take on our history and a consideration of our history in, in a way that, as you, you point out, perhaps hasn't been done before. Uh, and it was all always about trying to sort of work with the elements at hand, the beautiful country, the rich and ancient culture, um, stories about uh, true stories about massacres and characters and people. It is a fiction, but it's all about trying to tell that deeper truth to dig in and get gritty about the realities of what happened on, on country back then and the, the confusion that everyone uh, was confronted with, the good, the bad, the ugly, it was all happening. Um, and uh, we try and find that balance uh, in our storytelling. Uh, you know, I think of it always said, I've, I think of the film as a Northern in a way, but um, yes, country is character. I mean, when you go into that part of the world and you, you are able to live and experience um, life amongst the oldest living culture on earth. There's a connection to country. There's an understanding, a belonging to uh, the earth um, mm. that is profound. It's real, it's beautiful. It's something we actually all innately have as human beings, but we've lost that connection. So it's very, very important in this story to have that presence felt, uh, to try and take the audience onto country, into country, and to be within the story as opposed to just sitting outside of it and seeing the, the, the creatures and the animals reacting and interacting with human 
and um, that's that is actually very real. Um, it's a real part of who we all are, and I just hope that there's a uh, the audience gets a sense of that as they're immersed in the story. You know, they're kind of looking at things from different perspectives and being forced to perhaps uh, observe and listen and watch a little more closely. Lucky me to be able to work with those ingredients and the amazing, amazing people like the great Jack Thompson and Simon Baker and all of the incredibly um, naturally talented uh, binning and younger people. And for example, the, the, the relationship that plays out on screen between Travis and Goodjork, Simon and Jacob, was very much what was actually happening during the making of the film between those two men off screen. You had this Hollywood megastar, you had this young tribal boy from Arnhem Land who had never acted in his life, that was looking up to Simon for, for, for help, for guidance, for, for safety, learning, understanding this thing called acting. And then there's Simon having this whole incredible experience about being immersed in the culture and the land up there for the first time in that way and getting to work with somebody like Jacob. So there was this beautiful trust uh, between the two of them in real life. And in a sense, that father-son kind of relationship plays out in the story. Um, so in those moments between them, Jacob has a connection to to. Uh, the history that is touched upon in the film. His family lived there. There are connections to massacres, to all sorts of stories. So he was very much just being himself. There's a deep truth about Gurdjieff, uh for himself. I mean, that is, in a sense, his identity. He can relate to everything about that character and that connection to country and 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 the ideas that are portrayed in the in the story. So to him, it was about being in the moment and uh, and working with someone like Simon, he was able to, they were able to look at each other, have that trust and, and just understand the context of a scene and the story and, and literally live it and be it. I'd like audiences to, um, I firstly hope they will sit and, and, and in a sense feel they, they were suitably entertained by the story. Importantly, I hope it gets people to open their hearts and perhaps rethink and be open to rethinking the Australian story. And, you know, and supporting uh, this whole notion of uh, what is going on in this country. We've had the so many missed opportunities are still happening today. Um, you only have to look at uh, the Uluru State for the Heart and how that, in a sense, was rejected. Land rights, everything that's kind of being put up that. Uh, is about giving Indigenous people a voice and a place, a rightful place, their place in within their own place in this country. This is their country. Um, and they have the oldest living connection on earth to it as far as culture goes. And why aren't we celebrating that? Why aren't we embracing that? Why aren't we learning from, from that? Why aren't we listening to that? And make, because ultimately, it's a part of who we all are as human beings. Mm -hmm. There's a connection there that is celebrated and sung and danced in this country that we actually all are connected to, but we have disconnected to that through our civilization and our culture and our experiences as, as Ballander. And um, there's a beautiful opportunity to be had uh, for us all. And interesting, the film coming out post COVID, mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, we've all found out that we're vulnerable. We're all here on this planet. It is finite. Um, and perhaps people are a little bit more open now to the idea that we are actually all human and we do share a lot of things. And we have an opportunity in this country to uh, put the story straight mm. and to respect the truth, the truth of our history and this land and who we all are.